find on the overlap. So these are, this is a, a, a and, the, and, and group elements are defined in here. They might be defined elsewhere, but I at least need them to be defined in the past. Uh, in the patches, these are transition functions. different patches on the manifold. So, so a characteristic class is a closed form on a manifold constructed from a gauge field spring. So you give me, you uh, if I have some gauge field, I can construct a field spring. And if you can give me an object that is closed, then that thing is called a characteristic class. And the integral of that class is sensitive uh, to the um, uh, transition function in the sense that I can always solve, uh, let's see, um, closed form, let's call it. So I have dp equals zero. So locally, by point parade lemma, I could write P as D of uh, uh, do I have a general notation for it? D as D of Q, say, where the Qs, of course, will be sensitive to the transition function. They'll be defined patch by patch. And if I can do this everywhere, then I've got a trivial solution. But if I cannot write this the same way everywhere. In other words, if there's a non-trivial relation between the cues from patch to patch, then I have an interesting uh, gauge topological structure of the manifold. So um, the one example we saw already is that T could be uh, the trait of F to the N. DP is in, in an N uh, in a 2n dimensional manifold, which is the two form, so it'll saturate it. So it has to, because it has as many dx's as there are dimensions, the d of this thing has to be zero. And it is certainly a closed form, but because of the anomaly, it's not necessarily uh, an exact form. It's not necessarily uh, something. So if omega is omega, sorry, d omega plus omega squared, then we must have p of g inverse omega g to be p of omega. It's uh, got to be gauge invariant, and p is some polynomial. Or rather, could always be expanded as a polynomial in the gauge potential if you constructed some other function because it's a form. But because it's a form, I could expand that function for small values of the, of the argument and eventually the manifold of the power series will truncate, and so you're going to get a polynomial. Well, the consequence will be that you will have, it'll be a measure of the topological non-triviality of your manifold. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, 
And in fact, the integral of P will give a number, and that number is a thumbprint that tells you something about your manifold that you would not learn locally. So locally, you can always do this. Um, and the uh, integral of a characteristic class gives you some number whose knowledge tells you something about the manifold global properties, topological properties, insofar as the gauge field strength at least is concerned. Yeah, that's right. Omega would be, I called it A uh, over there, but Omega is uh, a one form. So Omega is Omega mu dx mu, it's a one form. And it is a gauge one form. Omega prime is G uh, inverse omega G plus G inverse G transforms like that. And uh, so this put into here gives you that transformation and we require P to be invariant. So the traits of S D F Okay. Is that okay? So, um, in fact, one example is that gauge field. Here's an, here's, uh, well, let me give the two most famous examples that are relevant to physics is that omega is equal to A. Uh, capital Omega equals F, which is the yang mill field strength. And, but another one is that Omega is equal to gamma AD mu DX mu, and uh, capital Omega is equal to D gamma plus gamma, uh, and let me put this in, D gamma AD plus gamma AC wedge gamma CB, and that is what we call the uh, gravitational two-form strength. In other words, that's the uh, Riemann tensor written in form language, basically, where omega uh, uh, gamma is, is uh, called the spin connection. And, um, but in general, uh, in general, you could have the curvature, uh, omega could be any, uh, Lie algebra value form. So in general, 